so dear students i welcome you all in the class on analog and digital communication in today's class we are going to finish our topic on pulse width modulation that we started in previous class and today we will also introduce pulse position modulation in today's class so in today's class we will finish off our topic on pulse width modulation and your pulse position modulation so first let me hurriedly revise the concept of pulse width modulation that we discussed in previous class so i told you that in pulse width modulation the width of the pulse is varied in accordance with the modulating signal okay and you can see on the uh, figure on your left hand side that the width of these pulses uh, uh, is varying in accordance with your modulating signal or your baseband signal so you can see that as your uh, uh, the amplitude level of your modulating signal is changing correspondingly the width of the pulse is also changing and we had seen that uh, the clock pulses or the uh, train of pulses which are applied to uh, your pwm modulator to generate P pwm signal the frequency of that clock signal it must be decided according to our sampling frequency okay and the pwm modulator it uses timer ic 555 and that timer ic uh, works in a specific mode that is known as monostable mode and we are able to get the pwm by operating this ic in monostable mode then i had talked about the triggering pulses that these triggering pulses are required uh, to operate timer ic 555 and these triggering pulses are generated from square pulses with the help of differentiator okay and negative triggering pulses are required by triple five timer ic in order to operate or in order to generate pwm fine next then i had explained in detail in the previous class the block diagram of timer ic triple five i had also explained that how to operate this ic in monostable mode we can also operate this ic in bistable mode we can also operate this ic in r stable mode but here for generation of uh, pulse width modulation we need to operate ic triple five in monostable mode where we have one stable state and uh, another is unstable state and circuit or ic triple five timer remains in unstable uh, state for a specific duration of time and that specific duration of time is decided by the threshold voltage is applied to your triple five timer ic as well as the control voltage that has been applied so through combination of your resistances capacitances and application of uh, control voltage we uh, could operate our ic triple five in monostable mode and as a result pwm was being generated so this is what we had seen in the previous class which is the circuit of pwm modulator as i just told you that we apply clock pulses which are uh, square pulses or train of pulses okay and these clock pulses <clears throat> are converted to trigger pulses with the help of differentiator so we use r1 and c1 and negative trigger pulses are applied so that's why the combination of the diode and r1 c1 they provide us negative trigger pulses for the operation of ic triple five okay and these trigger pulses decide the starting of pwm pulses you can see that in case of pulse width modulation the starting edge of uh, pwm pulses is fixed okay and the trailing edge is varying depending on the uh, value of the modulating signal okay and uh, as i told you that the end of the pulse that depends on the combination of your r2 and c2 okay and the modulating signal which has been applied onto the control pin that is your pin number five okay and this is how we could get pulse width modulated signal actually the main motive behind explaining pwm 
in detail again here because the generation of ppm is also uh, you know through pulse width modulation so that's why i need to recapitulate the concept of pulse width modulation and uh, so that you can understand the concept of pulse position modulator fine and uh, the diagram which is shown in this uh, uh, slide here you can see that there were uh, two internal uh, voltages for the comparator that is 1 by 3 vcc and 2 by 3 vcc so 1 by 3 vcc was corresponding to your trigger pulse and 2 by 3 vcc was corresponding to uh, your control voltage okay second comparator and uh, your pulse width was generated uh, for the duration your uh, capacitor was charging up to the threshold voltage 2 by 3 vcc and the combination of modulating signal as well fine so this was all about uh, pulse width modulation that we discussed in previous class so today we will first uh, talk about pulse width module uh, demodulation and then we will move to pulse position modulation so this is how our pulse width uh, uh, demodulator look like fine so it is a very very simple circuit just by looking at the circuit we are able to make out that how can we demodulate our pulse width modulated signal first let us uh, carefully observe pwm signal and uh, then we will uh, try to find out the strategy or the methodology that we have used to design the circuit for pwm demodulation okay so if we uh, carefully uh, look here see the width of the pulse is varying in accordance with the value of the modulating signal at the sampling instance okay so whatever value of the modulating signal was here your pulse width was decided accordingly similarly the value at this instance was deciding the pulse width for the modulating signal or the modulated signal in fact okay so here you look at the circuit what do we have first we have two transistors one is t1 and t2 okay and then we have second order low pass filter okay so this second order low pass filter active low pass filter we used in our uh, pulse amplitude modulation classes also okay and uh, you know that we are using this uh, a low pass filter second order low pass filter and obviously using it is using op amp so that's why it is active filter we are using this filter to remove the ripples that we get in the uh, signal so mainly the initial part of this circuit provides us the demodulated signal okay with ripples and those ripples are filtered out or signal is smoothened with the help of second order low pass filter and so that we get an exact demodulated output so now let us see how does this uh, uh, circuit works see our pulse width modulation signal it looks like this so here when the pulse is on or you can say the when the pulse is high okay so your width of the pulse is varying fine and uh, for for this duration for the duration bc the pulse is absent means the level is low okay so what we need to do in order to demodulate PM, pwm signal is see we need some strategy or some circuit which could convert this width of the pulse in the corresponding demodulated signal and the width of the pulse is a time domain parameter okay or in other words width of the pulse means the duration for which our pulse is on or pulse is providing energy okay so obviously the duration for which our pulse is providing us uh, the voltage value for that duration we can you know uh, store that value or we can accumulate that voltage value and uh, then uh, when the pulse is absent uh, we will uh, again revert back to the original voltage level and similarly uh, your pulse width uh, voltage values they are accumulated for the pulse duration 
uh, with the help of capacitor and when the pulse is absent then your capacitor is discharged for that so if uh, specifically uh, i explain the operation of this let us first uh, look at the transistor t1 we know that when transistor is in on state it is uh, in saturation stage okay in that case uh, the voltage level at uh, the collector is zero and when uh, your uh, transistor is in off state means cut off in that case if you look at the circuit this vcc voltage will appear at the collector here okay so uh, first let us see what happens during the pulse duration ab ab means when pulse is present so here we need to understand that your transistor t1 acts as an inverter okay fine so what does it mean that when my pwm signal is high okay so if you have high signal here means pulse is present then transistor will become on and if your transistor becomes on then since your emitter is grounded so the voltage at this collector terminal it will be zero okay so you have high at the input and you have zero at the output fine similarly if you have a uh, low at the input low at the input means no pulse present okay means for the duration bc in that case if it is low then transistor will be cut off cut off means your emitter will be cut off from the collector okay in that case the voltage across this collector will be this vcc voltage means it will be high so this is how our transistor t1 acts as an inverter if you have high at the input you have zero at the output of t1 if you have low at the input then you get vcc at the output so that is how your t1 acts as an inverter so what happens during ab my pwm signal it is high okay in that case my transistor sorry it will be t1 it will be yeah so during ab my pwm signal will be high okay so let me erase the ink and then you will be able to so if we have high here during a b then we will have low here because this uh, transistor is uh, acting as an inverter so if it is low then what will happen this transistor t2 will be turned off because there is low input at this point okay so if this transistor is off fine then what will happen in that case transistor is off so this emitter is cut off from this collector part here okay then through this vcc your capacitor c1 charges like this okay so capacitor charges and capacitor charges for the duration for which your t2 is cut off okay and t2 is cut off for the time your t1 is low t1 is low for the time for which your pwm signal is high and pwm signal is high for the duration of the pulse okay so we can say that for the duration for which our pulse remains high your capacitor charges okay through r and c for towards value vcc for the duration of pulse ab okay so this is what is being shown here that your capacitor is charging during ab now during bc what happens during bc my signal becomes low this transistor t1 it is an inverter we get high here so if we get high here then this high will be applied to transistor t2 so transistor t2 is on okay and when your transistor t2 becomes on then this emitter will be coupled with this collector okay in that case 
when this T2 is on, means this emitter and collector, it will be short like this. Transistor T2 will be in saturation. In that case, to whatever value your capacitor has charged, it will discharge rapidly through this transistor T2. Okay, so what we get during the duration of the pulse, your capacitor is charged, fine. Then your during the absence of the pulse, your capacitor is discharged. Then your capacitor is again charged, fine. Then it discharges during the absence period. Then your capacitor again charges and then it again discharges. So what we get in a way we get sawtooth kind of waveform like this. Okay. And if you carefully look at the envelope of these pulses, this envelope, it resembles our baseband signal that is your modulating signal. But in this envelope, we have ripples present. Okay. So once we get such kind of envelope for at the output of our T2, then we pass this signal through second order active low pass filter. And this low pass filter removes all these uh, discontinuities in the signal, in the uh, ramp shaped signal, and we get such kind of demodulated signal. Okay, so this is how we are able to demodulate our PC, PWM signal, and the circuit is quite simple. Hope all of you have been able to understand this. Fine. So let us now move forward to pulse position modulation. So this is how your pulse position modulation look like. And uh, the concept of pulse po position modulation is a bit uh, complicated as compared to your PAM and PWM. Let us try to understand the concept of pulse position modulation. So as we have seen in PAM and PWM, in pulse position modulation also, the position of the pulse, okay, remember this thing, the position of the pulse, it depends on our modulating signal, okay, which we uh, indicate with the FD. So whatever is the value of modulating signal at the time of the pulse. So this is our sample pulse. So whatever is the value at the sampling instance, that value decides the position of the pulse. So you can see in the figure on the left hand side of this slide that at the sampling instance, whatever is the value, we get the position of the pulse. Okay. So if you see in figure D, see that the position of the pulse is changing in accordance with our modulating signal value. So here in this figure, I have taken your modulating signal as a ramp signal, which is continuously increasing. Okay. And you can see here that in PPM signal, the position of the pulse is changing as your modulating signal value is increasing. Okay. In other words, I should say that the uh, gap from the starting point or you can say sampling instance the gap from that sampling instance is continuously increasing or your pulse is changing its position as the value of modulating signal changes okay so this uh, figure in itself is self-explanatory so that's why sometimes we are not able to visualize that how come the position of the pulse changes. So we have to remember one thing that in case of pulse position modulation, only the position of the pulse changes, whereas the width of the pulse and the amplitude of the pulse, it remains the same. Okay. So our sampling point, that is the point where our clock pulse or the trigger pulse is generated, that is fixed. Okay, so our pulse obviously will be changing its position with respect to some reference point. And what is that reference point? That reference point will be provided by the sample pulse. That is the beginning of the sample pulses. 
this is our reference point for each pulse with respect to this reference point my pulse is changing its position see i hope uh, this concept is now clear so this position from the reference point is being changed by the pulse individual pulse at the sampling instance depending on the value of the modulating signal at the sampling instance so this is the concept of our pulse position modulation i hope all of you have uh, uh, understood this so here in case of pulse position modulation also we use same timer ic555 and this ic555 timer it will again work in monostable mode as it was uh, working in pwm okay in fact circuit will also be same with minor uh, changes i will appreciate if you could notice those changes at the very first instance okay now in case of pulse position modulation obviously we will again be requiring triggering pulses which will be negative triggering pulses but there is a change here that those triggering pulses will be derived from pwm signal not from the clock pulses directly so what does it mean that in case of pulse position modulator instead of clock pulses we will apply pwm signal okay that is one change so if i again go back to pwm modulator see i have written clock here in ppm instead of clock we will have pwm okay so our uh, triggering pulses will come from pwm i'll explain uh, from why are we applying a pwm signal for generating our triggering pulses okay and the answer to that is that in case of our uh, pulse position modulation we need trailing edge and trailing edge of the pwm waveform in fact in a way i would like to say here that your ppm signal is generated with the help of pwm signal so here in this diagram i have also shown pwm now we need to extract some important information from this pwm signal if you look at pwm signal here in any pulse we have two edges one is the leading edge and another is a trailing edge so if we carefully look at pwm pulse the leading edge of every pulse it is fixed it is not changing and this leading edge is coinciding with the sampling pulse train okay but the trailing edge of pwm pulses this trailing edge is changing its position and this trailing edge is changing its position in accordance with the value of the modulating signal at the sampling instance i hope you have been able to understand see in pwm pulse your trailing edge is moving back or forward depending on my modulating signal obviously when we say that width is changing width is changing means one side is fixed so either uh, this is the width of the pulse or this is the width of pulse or this is the width of the pulse it means the trailing edge it is changing its position when we vary the width of the pulse if we fix the leading edge okay and this is where we get the clue for generating pulse position modulation modulating signal okay so what we will do that in ppm we need to change the position of the pulse okay in pwm the position of the trailing edge is changed in accordance with the modulating signal so if we generate our pulse at the trailing edge of pwm then our job is done means we will be generating our pulse from pwm signal okay at the point where my pwm pulse is getting over okay or where the trailing edge of my pwm pulse is finished okay you see here see this is the trailing edge 
so at this trailing edge i am starting my pulse okay this is a trailing edge i am at this trailing edge i am starting my pulse at this trailing edge i am starting my pulse at this trailing edge my i am starting my pulse okay so obviously the starting point of pwm pulse is decided by the trailing edge of pwm pulse okay and see the width of these pulses in ppm it is constant and obviously it has to be constant because in ppm we do not change the width as a result we get ppm signal whose position that that is whose leading edge is changing position of the leading edge is changing in accordance with the modulating signal okay i hope all of you have uh, understood uh, this concept of pulse position modulation so this is our concept of pulse position modulation let us now move forward so as i told you that this pulse position modulator will also use triple five timer ic okay which has been shown in the circuit here so we have used triple five timer ic and this triple five timer ic is again working in mono stable mode and i asked you in the previous slide that you should be able to notice the changes that we have made in the circuit of pulse position modulator we service your circuit of your pwm modulator so there are two changes here one i have already told you that instead of clock pulses we will have pwm signal for generating our trigger pulses okay and we will be using uh, the negative uh, triggering pulses okay and why do we want that as i told you that we will be using the trailing edges of pwm signal to generate our clock pulses of ppm signal okay so these trailing edges will give us the leading edge of our ppm pulse and in a way we can say that the leading edge of ppm pulse or the position of the ppm pulse will then be decided in accordance with our modulating signal so this is in a way we can say that your pulse position modulator generates P ppm signal with the help of pwm signal okay now another thing since your uh, modulating signal values they have already been taken care of in pwm pulse because in pwm we have pulse width modulation which is changing its position in accordance with our modulating signal okay we are simply converting our pwm signal into ppm signal so that's why in ppm modulator there is no requirement of modulating signal directly obviously your modulating signal will be required to generate pwm signal i am not saying that your ppm signal will not have uh, any modulating signal uh, input so from where does it come so will require modulating signal this modulating signal will be given to pwm modulator okay so this block can be represented as pwm modulator and this output of this pwm modulator will be given to your clock part of this triple five timer ic so the complete pulse position modulator should look like this so your modulating signal it generates pwm signal your pwm signal is applied as clock to this particular circuit for your pulse position modulator okay and uh, i asked you to notice one more change here and that change lies with this pin number 5 where we normally apply control voltage okay and as i told you that if you remember in case of pwm at pin number 5 my controlling voltage was nothing else but the modulating signal fine so this modulating signal has already been applied to generate pwm output so in case of ppm we will not apply that modulating signal again so that's why this pin 5 has been grounded through this capacitor 
so this is a second change that you were required to notice for ppm modulator fine so students this should be the complete diagram of your uh, pulse position modulator instead of what i uh, showed you before drawing these blocks okay so important point here is that pin 5 is grounded and your modulating signal is coming through pwm modulator in the form of clock pulses rest of the things they are uh, same as we talked in pwm modulator so here those uh, trailing edge of pwm pulses will be applied through the combination of r1 c1 and uh, diode okay which will decide uh, the starting point of your output pulses fine and the constant duration pulses will be generated at those starting points fine through your r2 c2 combination okay so pulse width is constant why pulse width is not changing here in this uh, ppm modulator because we have grounded pin 5 here and your r2 c2 combination will give us constant width of the pulses fine this is how we generate uh, pulse position uh, modulated signal with the help of pwm pulses okay and the diagram which is present on the right hand side of your slide it is just to reinforce the things that i told you in previous classes regarding the working of ic triple five that how we generate the width of the pulses with the help of your ic triple five timer depending on the threshold voltages applied to the comparators in ic triple five timer fine so I hope all of you have understood this working of pulse position modulator. Next. So now we come to PPM demodulator. The circuit of PPM demodulator resembles your PWM demodulator, though it is not exactly the same one, but more or less you can uh, say that in very first, first instance, it seems that this is again a PWM demodulator type. Okay, so in this slide, I have uh, again uh, shown you the generation of PPM from PWM. Here, the baseband signal has been taken as your analog uh, sinusoidal form. This is our clock pulses, which uh, provides us the sampling instances for our modulating signal. Then at the sampling instances, we generate PWM signal whose uh, width changes in accordance with our uh, modulating signal voltage value. So you can see that width is changing. Fine. And then what is happening that at the sampling instances, these are the sampling instances which are fixed. Fine. And uh, uh, we generate PPM signal from your PWM signal. So you can see that your starting of the pulses is defined by the trailing edge of these pulses. Okay, so this figure is a bit different from the earlier one and uh, you will be able to understand it is clearly if you uh, consider this portion of the pulse. Okay. fine so this this is the gap between your sampling instance and this one this is the gap between your sampling instance and the trailing edge of your pw impulse so this is what has been represented here okay so this is again the same diagram as we have discussed and uh, we have generated pw impulses like this so now let us uh, move to a PWM demodulator. So we have a transistor. Okay, this transistor is driven by PPM signal. So this is our PPM signal. You can see that the beginning of these pulses, it is at different instances, means the position is changing. Fine. So what we do in PPM demodulator, we utilize the gap between PPM pulses. We know that obviously you see in this diagram 
at the uh, sampling instances and the leading edge of uh, your ppm pulses this gap is varying so this gap this gap is varying this gap is varying okay and uh, if you include this thing also along with this variation so in a way you can say that the gap between the pulses is uh, varying in your ppm pulses and this gap variation will be utilized to demodulate our signal so what happens first uh, we look at the duration a b that is during this gap so during a b what happens my ppm signal is at low level so because of low level my transistor will be off okay so input of transistor will be low and transistor t will t1 will be in cut off so if it is in cut off so the voltage here will be uh, high because transistor is cut off okay so voltage here will be uh, vcc okay or you can say that the current flows from vcc through r and through c like this so during a b when my ppm signal is low and input to transistor t1 is low then transistor t1 is cut off and this c charges through rc combination so as i told you in the previous demodulator also that your uh, capacitor charges during the gap of the two pulses okay and then once the gap is over we come across the next pulse okay and during the pulse my ppm signal is high okay when it is high the input to the transistor will be high and if the input to the transistor is high then my transistor will be in saturation okay my transistor will be in saturation means my transistor is on okay it means your uh, this collector terminal is uh, grounded through emitter okay and in that case whatever value voltage capacitor has been charged to that is dis discharged okay so my capacitor discharges rapidly like this so this is the capacitor discharging okay so as i told you there also that uh, uh, during the duration a b my capacitor charges okay then it discharges rapidly if my voltage value is higher than then my capacitor again charges and then it rapidly discharges then charges then discharges and the envelope of uh, these pulses that envelope is equivalent to or is the same one as my modulating signal or the baseband signal so the variations or the ripples in this uh, signal this sawtooth type signal they can be removed with the help of second order active low pass filter fine so once the ripples are removed then uh, i get the demodulated output fine which is nothing but my same as that of the baseband signal at the input fine so this is how i am able to get my uh, ppm demodulated signal okay and that is all about my uh, ppm demodulator so with this uh, i am uh, done with the concept of pulse position uh, modulation also i hope all of you have been able to Uh, understand the concept of uh, pulse amplitude modulation first then pulse width modulation and then the pulse position modulation we have discussed their modulators their uh, demodulator circuits and this concept of pulse po modulation will uh, basically move us forward to the concept of digital modulation so i told you in the beginning classes also when we started with analog communication that uh, i told you that our objective is to move from analog modulation to the digital modulation and in between analog modulation and digital modulation we have pulse modulation okay so once we have discussed pulse modulation then now we will start developing our concept for the digital modulation techniques okay
so with this my pulse modulation topic is over and that's all for today's class thank you